Vox Box Star Wars Podcast, Episode 10. Oh, you thought Hoth was the first time Han Solo wielded a lightsaber. You are so wrong. What is thy bidding, my master? There is great disturbance in the book. The Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Your source for Star Wars comics, news, and more. And now your host, Michael Corley. Welcome back to Voxbox Star Wars Comic Book Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Today we are covering Star Wars number 10. It is titled Behemoth from the World Below. We open in a very classic comic book panel. It is somewhat reminiscent to the panel of Fantastic Four, we show the monster emerging from the ground. This giant lizard creature has been summoned by the local shaman in the middle of a pitched battle between Han Solo and his star hoppers and the marauders known as the Cloud Riders led by Sergi X Aragontis. In an interesting move, Sergi X makes a realization that, hey, if this uh, lizard kills all of the villagers, we don't have any more tribute. So, guys, we probably ought to kill it, and they begin to blast it. The problem is, this lizard, for no particular reason whatsoever, can fire a blast of energy from its head, and he begins to take out various marauders. Not only that, but it is picking up huge rocks and throwing them at the various flying ships. While the giant lizard monster is attacking Sergi and his crew, the rocks that he's throwing are about to hit Han Solo and his company. They have to dive out of the way. We also see that Don Quixote, the apparent Jedi, we don't know for sure, is not dead. Apparently his armor protected him from the blast earlier. That would be the first time in Star Wars that armor actually protected someone from a blaster. Now, Sergi X is realizing that all of the blasting that he and his raiders are doing isn't having any effect on the lizard. And actually, in a, in a pretty intelligent move, he decides to try and capture the shaman that apparently is controlling the lizard. There's no way to know what the intention was of the lizard, but the lizard stomps both Sergi X and the shaman simultaneously. Now, whether the lizard was trying to stomp Sergi X under the shaman's control, or whether the lizard was never really under the shaman's control, we won't know. They're both squashed. So now the monster is completely out of control and is shooting energy blasts out of its head, and everyone is going to die. That is, unless, of course, Han Solo and his gang can do something. Jackson, who tells them that rabbits just can't stand still, leaps into the battle, shooting at the giant lizard. The narrator tells us that the Lepus Carnivorous is possibly the swiftest biped on all of a Duba 3. The giant monster is throwing rocks at him, and he's just barely able to get out of the way, but he drops his blaster. He reaches down to grab it, and Amazia is calling him to leave the blaster. Just get out of the way. And she grabs him. And once again, he's hitting on Amazia, saying, Do my floppy ears detect a little affection in your voice? Nah, like my mother told all 80 of us kids, it'd never work out. Gotta marry a nice girl from the borough. They really have fun with Jackson and his dialogue. Amazia is just barely able to pull him to safety before they are both crushed. Amazia has twisted her ankle, but she's still alive. While they're trying to come up with a plan, Don Quixote is thinking to himself, that the slaying of a dragon requires the skill of one of the holy order of Jedi Knights. And that's when they realize that Don Juan has gone to face the lizard all by himself. We cut to Princess Leia. She has gone in search of Luke Skywalker. They had his last coordinates when he had suddenly called out and vanished from view. Will she be able to find him? We will find out. We cut back to Don Juan, and he has come around the rocks and saying, Hold, behemoth, and if you dare face me, he is saying, You think Don Juan Quixote too old for the noble art of combat, yet still one of so advanced years is one with the force which permits these stiff and weary bones to evade whatever hell-spawn bolts you might hurl at me. And that's when Han Solo realizes the lizard is acting strange. Something about the lightsaber is affecting the lizard. Hedgy, the spiner, is going in to help Don Juan Quixote, and he fires his spines, and they embed themselves in the lizard's arms, but does no real damage. All it does is anger 
the creature who fires a blast, narrowly missing Don Quixote, who is knocked to the ground. Han Solo says the lightsaber is acting like a lightning rod. It is attracting the lizard and making him act even more erratically. And that's when Han Solo has a crazy plan. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? It's time for... Dramatic Reenactment. All right, Ugly. I've got no more time to fool around with you. That's how I find out if that idea of mine is right or wrong. That awesome reading of Han Solo was from Jonathan Bell. Jonathan is one of the hosts on Radio Free Indoor. It's a Star Wars podcast about everything Star Wars. He and his co-host cover it all. You can check them out at southgatemediagroup.com and look for Radio Free Indoor. Thanks so much, Jonathan. That was awesome. The narrator says, thrusting with a weapon he has never wielded before, Han Solo makes a sudden dash towards the creature's chest. He literally embeds the lightsaber in the chest of the creature, cooking it from the inside. The narrator says, Surprisingly, the behemoth suddenly halts its haphazard attack, its massive hulk now twisting in convulsions. Then, the lightsaber flashing in the monster's heaving chest, there comes a strange crackling from within the creature, and... Don Quixote says, The force is with us, Han Solo. The lightsaber is destroying the demon. It is beginning to disintegrate. And with that... The creature is gone. We cut to the aftermath, and the uh, ragtag group, of course, wants to get paid <laughs> for helping save the villagers from Sergi and from the giant lizard monster. But the girl, Mary, that Han Solo saved earlier, is actually very impressed with the star killer kid, that is Jim. And she says, Maybe I can change your mind about leaving our village. But first, thank you, Han Solo. And she kisses him on the cheek. And as they ride away, Han Solo was thinking to himself, so I didn't get the girl. Who cares? She was kind of young anyway. At least now I can afford to get the Millennium Falcon out of Hawk. And if only for a minute, I got a little feeling of what it's like to be a Jedi Knight. And that ends Star Wars number 10. It's important to remember that at this point... The only people that have any Jedi-like properties was Ben Kenobi, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker. At no point did we get to see the full extent of what it would have meant to be a Jedi Knight in the Old Republic. And these comics are trying to answer that. They clearly understand that the people who watched the original Star Wars wanted to desperately know more about these mysterious Jedi Knights, and they're doing their best to fill in the holes. Thank you so much for listening today. You have a wonderful day, and may the Force be with you. No! You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Thank you for listening to the Vox Box Star Wars podcast. Join the Vox Box Facebook page to keep up with the community. Have a great day and may the force be with you.